Hi and welcome to my playhouse and today we're gonna try and install this new version of VMware it's the 6.7 that has come out and I'm gonna try to install it on a Lenovo X3650 Model 2 um, I've gotten a fly in here apparently it does not know that this is a no-fly zone yeah, I'm gonna be trying to install ESXi 6.7 on the Lenovo X3650 Model 2. And as this is a Lenovo server, Lenovo actually does a custom build of ESXi. And I have downloaded the Lenovo build and I've downloaded the regular standard VMware build. I'm guessing very much that they're very, very similar and as this server model is not really um, on the list of compatible servers uh, with ESXi 6.7 well there might not even be any drivers for it on the USB stick but I got it so um, we're gonna try that one and we're gonna try the other one maybe well I don't know I think we'll try and start with the Lenovo one and if that totally fails we'll then try the other one as well um, so yeah I need to find a disk for this because we're gonna be installing on a regular disk uh, whew, disk 146 gigabytes uh, oh, this one is a predicted failure so we're not gonna take that one but I'm gonna get a disk and we're gonna boot the server Okay, found a disk drive. This is just a 146 gigabyte 15K SAS drive. So we're gonna pop that in. Right, the, the server is off. It's uh, blinking. That means that it's um, it has power, but it's not powered on. That also means that I could go and access this through the built-in IMM adapter in the server, and I could power it on remotely. But um, yeah. We're gonna try something. I was told that, um, I didn't know that, but if you power on a server, you plug in the power and you wait until it blinks in this rate, and then you turn it on, it will make a lot of noise when you just boot it because it hasn't really booted the IMM yet. But if the server has been sitting for a little bit and the IMM has done its cycle of booting and stuff, it should not make much noise so I am curious to um, if it's up and ready yeah that's not much noise oh we need to put in a USB key uh, this one the Lenovo one is going into the USB there go <laughs> so let's see we have to go into the BIOS and configure the, the drive that I just put in there. Um, so I'm going to be finding my way into the BIOS. It's going to be a bit... Yep, it found that the drive was... Um, well, it wasn't as expected. So we can... Big C and we should load the configuration. Entering configuration, press... Yes, big Y. There. And I need a mouse for this. So we have done this many times, but we'll just do it once again. We just need to configure one drive so that we have something to put our operating system on. Let's see, it has found a configuration. Configuration one. There. We'll just clear that. And we'll make a new one. So it has just deleted whatever was on that disk. Uh, I have just been using that disk for fun and giggles. So it found the drive, SAS drive, and it uh, comes out to uh, 135.972 gigabytes on configured good. So we go down to configuration wizard and can here choose to make a new configuration or we can add a configuration. Let's just get the new one. And next. And yes, it's going to destroy the data once more. So here we can do a manual configuration. Um, yeah, that means that I have to do a lot more manual labor. 
if I pick automatic I have to remember to not pick redundant because it's gonna mess up uh, so no redundancy that helps when there is only one drive so next and it figures out that much so we can accept that do you want to save yes please and yes please to initializing the drive and it should be done in a second there okay boom so now it should have built my drive out here Let's see we get physical drive here out of that drive we have made this virtual drive and drive group and stuff so that's all good to go the server has a drive it works this way that uh, we put in a drive in the server the drive is then given to the rake controller which sees the drives and then it takes the drives and it presents that to the operating system so if we were to do a RAID 5 or RAID 6 or RAID whatever the operating system will actually just see one drive the drive that is being presented from the RAID controller uh, the operating system has options to see it in different ways but mostly it will just see one drive so exit yes. and we will go into the BIOS here if we can that's F1 The reason we are going in and trying this is because I've heard that it might be an issue on this model of CPU. So let's just see the CPU. We have some processor details here. Uh, we are dealing with the Intel Xeon X5570 and this is a 2.93 GHz CPU. There are two of those in there, so each of them are there. So I'm gonna go out again and we're gonna boot from the USB and see if we can get ESXi 6.7 up and running even though it might be a CPU that is too old. Oops, it just booted directly. I'm not sure if this is from the USB key or if there is a USB key in the server. I was expecting that I would have to uh, hit F12 and uh, select the boot drive. Uh, we didn't get to do that. Uh, it boots rather fast, so... Okay, we get unsupported CPU family Intel blah 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 C compatibility list We are running into an issue here uh, That this CPU is not gonna be working So it was booting from the USB I'm pretty sure it's gonna do no difference whatsoever so um, but I'm gonna try and boot from the standard VMware I'm sure that the error message over here it's not gonna clear but I'm gonna I wanna make sure Okay, we get exactly the same. Hmm. Okay, so I've just powered the server just above it. I believe this has a newer CPU and as I've just turned it on, this should make a lot of noise. And it does. Uh, that's because the IMM has not initialized yet and it actually says that on the screen. Now the IMM is initializing, it's going to run a lot of tests and then when it's done with all of those tests, it's going to quiet down. There we are, nice and quiet again. And on the screen it has completed all of that and it will just continue booting. So I've just entered the BIOS of this machine and this machine has been updated with the Intel Xeon x5650 which is a six core processor running at 2.67 gigahertz so newer cpu uh, next generation over the 5570 that we just saw so let's see if this will work oops that has windows installed apparently i need to uh, take the drives out 
well we don't really need to install this we just needed to get past that cpu test so we're just gonna do this and then when it comes to installing it at some point it will ask us to select a drive well then we'll just cancel it so this is um let's see how far this goes if uh, if it dies the same place Okay, so the 5600 series will do the job. Apparently it, it surpassed where it broke down on the 5500 series. So, okay, that is really nice to know. Okay, so it uh, brags about that it, um, it will install on most uh, hardware. Um, but only um, only hardware on the compatibility guide are supported. Yeah. Okay, so that is really nice to know that if you want to run the latest version of VMware ESXi 6.7, well, you need their Intel Xeon 5600 series. Uh, the one I tested with was the X5650. So now we know that that will work. Uh, I don't know if any of the E processors will work. I'm sure someone will uh, leave that in the comments below. Is it all the 5600 series that will work? And um, yeah, these CPUs are not expensive. These are actually not the right ones. I couldn't find them. They're gone. But they are not very expensive. An Intel Xeon X5650 is like $25 used on Amazon. Um, I'll try and remember to link that below uh, so it's like two CPUs 50 bucks and it's worth it compared to um, if you have an awesome Lenovo X3650 model 2 that would have come originally with two quad-core processors so for like 50 bucks you get two hex core processors and they can run the latest version of VMware so it's probably 50 bucks well spent. 50 bucks for four extra cores, that's money well spent. I guess I will have to go buy some processors because I only have X5650s in that one. Uh, so I have the like a number of servers that is not gonna be able to run the latest version. Not that they need to, but it would be nice. Faster processors are available in the 5600 series. I believe that the fastest processor is the 5690 that is um, currently a bit more expensive but well if you're watching this video in like half a year or so well check it out it might have dropped so much that you want to go with that one instead so well thank you very much for watching my videos do um, jump over to Twitter and follow me there it helps when I approach companies to sponsor if I have a good large twitter following so um well support me that way and uh, and give the video a like we got this working even though new cpus are needed so uh, thank you very much for watching my videos do subscribe to my channel so that you can see me again and have a really nice day bye bye